Jesus. Good morning, everybody. It's definitely Monday at the Vid Nerd <laughs> Studio here in Las Vegas. If you're joining us, uh, you may have noticed that we were live a few minutes ago, and we just lost the feed. It just went away. Sorry about that, everybody. Uh, so we're starting over. Uh, so if you did not see that earlier feed, then you're going, I don't know what you're talking about. What are you doing? Uh, this is the Vid Nerds, your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars of the day and all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. My name is John Polnick, along with my host, Michael Deeb, over there. We do the show every monday through friday nine o'clock in the morning and one thing about mondays at nine o'clock in the morning things oh, don't always man. go as planned so um yeah let's start this thing over what we do on the show is we nerd out on cars we pick the most interesting cars on all the interesting uh on all the automotive auction sites and we we talk about all these cars uh so we dig through them all so you don't have to we narrow it down to the most interesting ones and then we make predictions as what we think they will sell for and we always start the show uh with how we did the previous day predictions we make predictions of what we think they're going to sell for uh so let's see how poorly we did it last friday uh michael deeb let's go right to friday's cars we'll do a quick wrap up and then we'll get right to today's cars remember jp there is no such thing as deja vu it's just a glitch in the matrix that's right and we yeah. are in it okay yeah so on bring a trailer jp we started off don't forget we had warren madsen from dwa mm -hmm. and rad for sale on with us uh we started off on bring a trailer with the 1978 porsche 911 sc uh nice car with 150,000 miles but paint was challenged I said 42, you said 44, and Warren said 36. Our car sold for a whopping $50,000. You got the win on a surprisingly high lot. Uh, we jump over to Hemmings for a minute to speak Italian. Uh, we wanted to see if the pleated pants knew how to value a 1997 Ferrari 550 Marinello that needed a belt service to be done. I said 115, Warren said 112, and you took the high bid at 125, and you were closest because that car sold for $129,150. Uh, another win for you and another good result. Uh, we go back over to bring a trailer to look at some exotic metal from McLaren and Mercedes collaboration. This is the 2009 SLR convertible in a very unusual metallic black paint paint job with silver arrow interior uh i was high on this car and i said 375 and i think i brought you guys up with me because you said 365 and warren said 350 our car stalled out and failed to sell on bat at two hundred and ninety thousand dollars. that car will turn up somewhere else um we looked at a couple of other auctions on bat that closed on sunday first was the 2003 mercedes-benz g500 with a branded title, a buyback, a lemon, uh, an accident on the Carfax. It had some cool overland tent and awning and ladder gear, but this car was in poor condition, had high miles and a bad title. It was really strange. So when I said 25 and you said 27, we thought we were in the ballpark. Warren was up there at 31, and what does he know that we don't? Because this car sold for $35,750. Uh, and then the last car, JP, also on Bring a Trailer, also on Sunday, was the 1991 Chevrolet Corvette ZR1. This is the white one with the red leather interior, the manual transmission, relatively low miles at just 19,000. I said 29, you said 30, and Warren loved this car. He said 36. The car sold for $32,750. JP, you got 13 wins last week to my seven. My one bright spot was the Yahtzee earlier in the week. So that's about it. That was Friday, and that was the week. Wow, that was a, you know, it's interesting. That's uh, one of the first things. If you watch Bid Nerds at all regularly, you know that we never talk about the cars over the weekend because that's kind of a new thing. That's a bring a trailer newbie. Uh, and so we've been kind of watching these cars over the weekends, and I think we'll continue doing that on Fridays. We'll pick a couple cars that go that auction off on over the weekend. Uh, you know, maybe we'll do a separate episode for weekend cars one day down the road. But for right now, it's interesting to see that, it, you know, my big thing was I was concerned that the cars on the weekend would have a disadvantage, but but that just does not seem to be the case. I mean, that, the number that G five hundred was nuts. Yeah, I mean, yeah. is that because it's the week? It was a weekend auction. What do you think? Do you think that had anything to do with it? I, I don't know because I haven't been paying attention to the weekend results that much at all. So that I will leave that one open for interpretation. 
you know, there, ha- there has to be something in the water to make that G-Wagon go for big money because that thing had rust and all kinds of issues uh, that you Challenges. mentioned. Challenges. Yeah, it's just it doesn't make sense that it would go for a premium. Um, the ZR1 is a little bit high, uh, nice low miles and everything, but um, at least that car is a low mileage, kind of perfect colorway type of, uh, it's the ultimate yeah. in 80s and early 90s. It's the best Z- C4, I think, that, that would be out there, right? A ZR1 with a manual. Remember how big a deal that was back in the 80s? Absolutely. That car was incredible. I mean, it had like Ferrari 12 cylinder power from an American V8 at like yeah. a fraction of the cost. So everybody went nuts for that car. C4s in general were a big splash in yeah. their time frame. And the ZR1 was the top of the food chain for American cars, you know. Well, they did a lot to the suspension too. I mean, it, it still, you know, yeah. didn't handle by any by, you know, any stretch of the imagination compared to like a 911 or something like that. But I remember them boasting, you know, about how much uh, G-force the car could take on the skid pad, which was yep. interest it's an interesting um, you know, piece of information when you're trying to decide, okay, which car do I buy? Do I buy this over the Ferrari or over the Porsche or whatever? And it's like, all right, well, I guess G-Force in a corner makes sense if you're on a NASCAR track or something, but yeah, that doesn't really hold up when you're trying to do tight corners and stuff. And they were trying to say that that was the metric to use in order to say, oh, this car handles unlike Corvettes before. The brakes were incredible too. They Those yeah. cars had incredible uh, brake distance and all that sort of thing. They were... They were not way ahead of a time, but they were serious performers, you know? Well, yeah. And if you've got a car that can slow the cars down. Yeah. If you've got a car that can dominate in the straightaways uh, and late brake, if you match it with brakes, then it almost doesn't need. I mean, and that's kind of the the Corvette. uh, That's the Corvette model. Dominate straightaways, brake late so you can go fast in a straight line for as long as you can, slow down to a crawl around the corner, and then mash on the gas again uh, and take off in a straight line until you have to mash on the brakes again. It's like, uh, uh, yeah. Whereas, you know, a 911, you're trying to gracefully get around the corner, you know, kind of carry your, yeah, it's just whatever. I don't know. Uh, Corvettes. The the Porsche does have a ton more uh, road feel and feedback, but the Corvettes probably don't handle quite as bad as what you're describing sounds more like a Viper to me than a, than a Corvette. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that whole idea of go down, stop, turn, and then go, go down again. That's the whole point and shoot thing. It's like driving on a track when it's wet, you know, you can't really carry corner speed, but you could go stop, turn around, go stop, turn around, go stop. It's a relative thing. I mean, it's certainly not literally like that, but I mean, if you look at the cars of the the contemporary, I mean, look at what car was that up against on a track? It was up against a a car with an engine half its size, you know, a 911 or something like that. Literally. Yeah. Literally half its size. uh, All right. Well, enough about Corvettes. Let's get to today's car. So uh, guys, if you haven't hit the subscribe or like or notification button, please do that now. And we really appreciate you guys watching the Bid Nerds. Uh, We do this Monday through Friday at uh, nine o'clock every Monday through Friday. That's like nine o'clock in the morning. We're here nerding out for you people. That's why we do this. We're nerds. (laughs) So you don't have to be the rest of the day. You could just like let us nerd and you can be just like a normal productive part of society. And you could just like let, let us do all the nerding. And yeah, it's just, I don't know. We're providing a service. I'm sure that's the way it works. Um, All right, uh, Michael Deeb, let's get to today's cars. Let's make some predictions. Uh, We've got an interesting lineup today, I think. There is an Eastern lineup. And JP, which one did you tee up first? What are we starting with? So, uh, you know, I want to start with the C4S because they're so okay. hot right now. 996s they are. are just like they the are. thing, right? I want this car so bad. If you bad. sold right. a 996 uh, two months ago, you're an Sorry. idiot. You should have waited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, the, that's yeah these cars... These cars are doing better than Dogecoin. So uh, here we go. Uh, we've got a 2004 911 C4S. This is mostly the last year of the 996 platform. Aren't there some 05 996s out there, JP? There are, yeah. Uh, the, like Turbo the, S cabs the turbo, or something. The Turbos and the C4S cabs were still 05s. Yeah. Yeah, but this is basically the, the last itineration of the 996 platform. Our car is silver black, offered out of Springboro, Ohio, with just 26,000 original miles. Uh, Now, the uh, owner reports that the IMS bearing has not been done, but other than that, this is the car everybody wants. Silver, black, manual. Uh, It's got, I don't know, 18-inch wheels. What else can you go on and on about? This was a special model with all-wheel drive and bespoke bodywork. I love that these cars have kind of the wide rear, but no fixed wing. 
Uh, so I think it's one of the prettiest cars. It might not be the best driving example because the all-wheel drive systems are a little heavy. Uh, but if this is the only 996 you know, you don't wouldn't realize you were giving that much up. Uh, this is a tune-owner example. Um, expect to pay a couple of grand to get the IMS bearing fixed for yourself so that you could drive it for the next handful of years uh, without any concerns or worry about this thing having a catastrophic failure while you're out there enjoying it on your favorite back road. Already up to $45,000 with under three hours to go. It's sitting on just seven bids. So that tells me that the people that wanted this jumped it up to kind of a respectable number. Um, but it's very easy to see this car with low miles, despite not having the IMS bearing being done. I can see this car going well into the 50s, JP. What do you think? Are they that hot? Are we going to see 55, 60 grand for this thing? 50 would be a new high, but this is the kind of car that I would expect to see that. I mean, it's like you said, it's an 04 model, so it's kind of like the last of them. Uh, the... Yeah. Uh, uh, this one does have sport exhaust, which is a great, great uh, option on this car. Uh, really does sound uh, fantastic, and it's nice to be able to turn it off on like a Gundo hack or, or changing it out with a uh, fab speed or something yeah. like that. Uh, you know, it's got the Porsche crests in the seat. I would like to have seen it with uh, the sport seats. Uh, this has the pleated leather, you know, supple leather, just horrible leather uh, on the <laughs> interior, which is just awful. Buddha, he doesn't mean that, Buddha. He doesn't mean that. I uh, absolutely mean that. <laughs> <laughs> unequivocally with no uh, jumping around there. That is just hideous. Worst thing that Porsche has ever done. Uh, sent, uh, you know, I was going to make a joke about something that you probably shouldn't. Um, anyways, oh look, God. this car is, uh, this car really is fantastic. Um, yeah, let's not. <laughs> they really are great, uh, but I don't know. I just, I can't. I, I, I can't get over, I, I you talk about IMSs and all this cylinder scoring and stuff like that. This engine's probably going to be fine, but low mileage 996s. I know I sound like a broken record, but you are going to deal with a bunch of maintenance stuff. It's forget the IMS for a second. Forget the, uh, forget the cylinder scoring stuff. Um, this is a car with so few miles that it's unlikely that the camshaft seals have been redone. You might have a second gear detent. There's just so many little things that go wrong with these in the first 30, 40,000 miles uh, that if the car wasn't under warranty during that time, th th now it's on your dime. You know, all those <laughs> little things that went wrong with these cars uh, when they were new, just they just went in the service department and they got taken care of. Uh, but, you know, there are problems that are going to come up with this car before 50 thousand miles that you as the new owner are going to have to pay for it, and they're going to be expensive they're not like grenades like the ims or, or cylinder scoring right. but they're problems you don't want oil on your floor you, you buy something like this oh it's got twenty six thousand miles it's going to be like a brand new porsche yeah a brand new porsche that needs service so be advised i don't think that's a reason not to buy this car but i also don't think personally i don't see any reason to pay a premium for one with low miles i would way rather have a super clean one with fifty thousand miles and all the records that have shown that pretty much everything has been taken care of when you go to replace that ims in this thing uh which is the first thing that you're going to have to do uh there's going to yeah. be a list of other things that they're going to have you do too so thinking that you're yeah. going to get away with that twenty five hundred three thousand dollars service ain't going to happen get ready to drop five yeah. to seven grand yeah, it, it's legit. But if you do that, you're you're in for a good car, especially yeah, here. Yeah. Uh, JP, th listen, JP, that's a great take. I mean, I know you do keep bringing it up, but it's it's legit. If you if you spend your money to to uh, maintain your car to a high standard, your car will reward you with years and years of uh, reliable service. But you have to invest a little bit of money to to get that in return uh this is a spectacular car jp this also has the sport shifter so it's got the short throw shifter mm. from the factory nice. the sport exhaust uh the bose sound system and uh and xenon headlights i mean these are this was a really nice car this one was ninety thousand dollars when it was brand new and it looks like it comes with a second set of wheels and tires as well God, why uh, on so, earth didn't they pop for the good seats? I mean, it's like that supple leather stuff looked old when it was brand new. I guess it was for old <laughs> butts, so uh, it just needed yeah. to match. I mean, it's like a geriatric butt goes into the geriatric seat. Like, <laughs> like those seats in McDonald's that have the little cups for your buttocks uh, so that you get uncomfortable because they want you to they want to turn the table. I think that's what they that's were going for in this so stupid, true. terrible, terrible seats. Love this car. So, JP, I think this one's going to break a record. I, I predict this car will bring $54,000 in three hours from now out of Springboro, Ohio. 
uh, plump for the IMS, put another couple grand into whatever your trusted mechanic tells you to do, uh, and you're in for a treat because you're basically buying the car at half price. At $54,000, what kind of 997 could you get? You're basically looking at a 9971 well, now. Uh, yeah. A 9972 is probably out of reach unless it's a base or a base cab. Um, yep. So, uh, but, you know, the 9972 is definitely the better car. I will say, though, that this is the better looking car. I, I have always said that the C4S 996, and I've been saying it for years, uh, unlike everybody else, else that used to say oh my gosh 996s are so ugly i don't care blah 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 the, i've been screaming at the top of every mountain that this is a future classic for 10 years now um the this is the better looking car than a 997 hands down period including the front people it is with most especially the front everyone talks about how the back end of this car looks so good with the big gills on the rear it's fender got a nice ass it, yeah it really does have one of the best looking butts in porsche or in cars really but i think for my money i love the nose i love these headlights uh and if you don't like these headlights you're just wrong you just don't know what you're talking about and this <laughs> nose with the big you know with the big turbo holes in the front looks i'm trying to get to a darn picture of the nose here i'm whacking poetic about the front of the car and i'm not even showing the front uh here we go um you know that nose looks better than almost any 997 uh, save a gt3 uh that nose with the big open holes in the front you know sucking the air in that looks so much better especially than you know you've got this car this is a 2004 the very next year on the same showroom floor was this car in a convertible next to a convertible 997 uh, a base one and the nose on a 997 is snore put you to sleep uh, what, what, is it, <laughs> huh? what, is that a car oh yeah i guess it's a car. Oh this thing God, this thing's so exciting funny. You know, um, and on top of all that, I'm going to say it right now. 996 turbos are ugly. They're ugly because they've got that big hole on the side and it just ruins all the lines. Uh, this car is the perfect looking 911. It's all the proportions are right there. It's the best looking water cold Porsche other than maybe the 911 R, the 991 R. This is the car. There it is. Wow. I have gone nuts on the C4S, but I do not. Uh, I don't think it's worth fifty four thousand dollars. But I think you're wow. right that someone After all will, that love. I think someone will pay it. I don't. I wouldn't. Yeah. Um, as much as I love these cars, uh, fifty four grand get you in really nice nine nine seven territory, and I think most people would pay or that. Or a very nice 964 Cabriolet you could get for 54000 Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't know about that. Maybe maybe two months ago, but I don't think so now even. Um, yeah. You know, but you're they're right. all dried I mean, up. There's close. not available yeah. in the country. There's, nothing. there's, yeah. no, there's no 964s out there available, really. Yeah, period. Uh, all right, so, Jim, yeah, I'll, I'll say your... 50 grand. I'll say 50 grand. 50 grand. All yeah. right. There it is. <clears throat> all right, let's do another portion, JP. Also, yeah. I'll bring a trailer is a car that is tailor-made for you, although uh -oh. I don't think you really like this paint job. The 2014 Porsche Cayenne. Hmm. This is a base model with a six-speed manual transmission. Offered to us out of North Salem, New York, our car has just 57,000 original miles. It's powered by the normally aspirated 3.6-liter V6, but it's run through the six-speed manual, which is really, really rare, especially in uh, 2014. Uh, this car... JP is in jet green metallic exterior, which I'm sure is a deal breaker for you, but it does have a full black leather interior, all wheel drive, 19 inch wheels, panoramic sunroof. I mean, this car has got some nice options to it. I'd put a tow package on it and call it a day. There you go, JP, six speed manual with just 50,000 miles on it. That is a rare bird indeed. Uh, what's to like and what's not to like on the early, the first gen of the, sorry, the dot one of the second gen Cayenne, E2 Cayenne dot one. E2 Brute. Okay, so look, this, uh, this color is freaking great. I don't like green. You're right. You called it. But this particular green, I what did you call it? Jet green metallic? Jet green metallic. Never yeah, heard of it. Yeah, that is great. I mean, yeah, I've never heard of it. I don't know if I've ever seen it, but I think this car would lend itself very well to uh, a cool livery. And frankly, a Cayenne with black interior is all that matters. It really doesn't matter what color the exterior is. I can live with it if it's got a black interior. And this one, I man, I, I don't usually like colors but had i known this one existed i would have looked for one this is 
really really cool um and the fact that it's a six speed manual in this platform is going to be so much fun i love making cayenne first gen cayennes into the safari off-road thing i don't think that's the thing to do with one of these i know a few people have done it but the e2 does not really lend itself to that off-road this that overlandy thing it's just a little more these are these are not built as tough and strong as the earlier platform yeah, they, ones they definitely over engineered the first gen guys. yeah it's like yeah. crazy yeah this is way more you know what they didn't make a macan back then right so this is right. this is the macan you want forget a macan if you could buy one of these uh because yeah, i mean with a, with a manual with a manual transmission this is uh, this thing's going to handle well. You could set it up with street wheels and street tires uh, with that transmission. You're just going to mob. Uh, this is going to be so much fun to drive, even though it's pretty much the same power drain as the earlier one. Uh, there's something about the throw of the stick on this version of it that just is way more car-like. In the older ones, they do feel a bit truck-like as you're rowing through the gears. It really helps to put a shorter um, a shorter yeah. shift lever on it, which these kind of do through the factory. It's really not a short shift kit or anything like that. It's just literally a shorter lever, lever which really helps. But this interior is so much more, uh, you know, up to date and more creature comfort. And it yeah. just, you know, it's just a really, really cool. I love the E2 interior pack setup. Um, yeah, uh, this thing's great. Uh, it's probably going to bring some big money in this color combination. Um, and why shouldn't it? Where do you think it's going to land, Michael Deep? So, JP, our car was $64,000 when it was brand new, and this is a verified one-owner vehicle, mm. again, offered out of North Salem, New York. So I suppose you'd want to look at the underside of this car, yeah. make sure that it wasn't driven year-round on rusty, salty roads. <clears throat> but with just 57,000 miles, the manual transmission and the unusual jet green metallic exterior color, this car is in for a treat. Uh, it's at $28,500 with still four and a half hours to go on bring a trailer. And JP, I think, oh man, this is tough. I think this car could bring $36,000, but I am going to leave it there. 36. I'm going to go high on this car. So am I. Um, we usually, when we see these, they almost always have 100,000 miles or more. Uh, we have not seen a low mileage one. Uh, we've seen some E1 GTSs with fairly low miles that have brought big, huge money. But yep. this platform with a manual, this is such a hard car to find. I wish it didn't have the panoramic roof. That is kind of a problematic thing. Adds a lot of weight and a lot of you know weight that's high. Uh, so that's going to you know hinder the, the handling. And you will notice it compared to one that doesn't have that. But that said, um, I still think this thing is just oh man I think it's going to bring big money I'm going to say 40 I think it could top it I think wow it could we um, oh my goodness there you go I, I know that's crazy and I know I'm going way over yours I should be playing it closer to the vest and go you know 37 or something like that but I really do think this thing um, is worth all the money because what do you get <laughs> Other like okay, you want? I mean, literally a, a, a Macan. Forget that a Macan. A, you could get uh, what an early Macan with about the same miles. So what are you talking? 2015, 16, uh, with mm. the same engine as a V6, but it has the little PDK thing. And it, man, this has more room and a manual. Why the heck would you get a Macan? This thing's so much better. Oh my gosh. Anyways, love it. Excited to see what it does, and uh, we'll be paying attention to it. If it doesn't take off, uh, this thing might, might wind up in Las Vegas. I don't like the gray painted wheels. I'd love to see – those are 19-inch wheels with like a silver lip but gray um, spokes. I'd yeah. love to see it on a set of 21-inch wheels, Porsche yeah. wheels, that are all silver. I think that would look really hot on this car. Yeah, the sport wheels that are on like my turbo would look fantastic, but I don't know if I would yeah. do that. Uh, as good yeah. as it would look, and I agree with you, Deep, I think that's – they, they're heavy you know they're just straight up yeah. heavy uh and uh this True. is the kind of car that you know i i think yes stepping up to maybe a 20 inch wheel uh is about as big as i would want to go and because because the thing is the six cylinder is not a big enough engine for this it does it has enough power right. to have some fun but you're ringing it out all the time and with the manual yeah. you can do that when you drive <clears> the, <throat> the automatic version of these they, they're just anemic they just feel sluggish and mad but uh with the six speed you can pull it out the bigger wheels would look fantastic but uh, i'd be i'd be worried about losing power i don't know you're probably right though screw it it would just look so good with the 21 so you just live with it yeah a little, a little, yeah. a little, a little, a little flash. Yeah. 
Uh, all right, JP, let's jump over to cars and bids. Doug DeMiro found an interesting car. This was a Canadian spec 1988 Nissan 300ZX mm. Turbo. Now, our car is showing, um, you know, like 130, what did he put here? It's uh, 157,000 kilometers, which equates to about 98,000 miles. It's technically true mileage unknown, but it's on a clear Florida title. Somebody brought the car in in 2017 uh, and then went around and kind of did a little rotisserie restoration and sort of refurbished the car and put some mods on it. Now, look, th these are okay cars. They're not my favorite. I don't really, I never liked this generation of the car. But this guy went and put 19-inch, like, BBS-style wheels on the car. And it just doesn't even look period correct. So this car offends me from the get-go. I Just the way it sits on these wheels, it looks stupid. I, You know, it doesn't, those don't add to the performance. It's just adding to the flash. And I, that doesn't speak to me at all. So uh, I could care less about this car. But uh, anyway, the list goes on and on. Um, there's a uh, springs, um, strut bar, uh, brake calipers and, uh, racing exhaust and turbo timer and boost control and intercoolers, all the stuff. Uh, so while these cars made like a couple hundred horsepower when they were new, I'm guessing this car probably makes 50% more horsepower. So this could be a 300 horsepower, 300 ZX turbo from 1988 if you're into that, that sort of thing. The paint looks to be in good condition, but you'd have to change the wheels for me to even talk to you in a parking lot. So, uh, JP, with uh, 30 minutes to go, it's sitting at $9,000 on wow. 14 bids uh, out of Jacksonville, Florida, which is also a problem for me. I don't think that's a great area to go buy a used Japanese car. But uh, anyway, there you go. Take it away. Why'd you pick this car? Uh, I've been waiting for a 300 Z of this generation. It's the last, you know, it's the, it's that 87, 88, 89 generation where they kind of smoothed out the body work. Uh, I really think they look wonderful. They're so beautiful. They're so period. Um, but I'm Disagree. with you. They, uh, well, I mean, you're wrong, but that's okay. Uh, you know, um, you know, I mean, it's Monday. I'll let you make mistakes. I couldn't agree with you more though, that the wheels are offensive. I mean, yeah. the wheels wow. are just like, this guy is going to lose a lot of money. I, when I saw this car, <laughs> I was like, whoa, finally a clean 300 ZX. We just never see them clean. Usually they're beat yeah. up. The, the dashboards are all roached out. They, I mean, look at that. That front end is so good. That's so 80s. Oh, man. Um, and with the T-tops and the, and the rear wheel drive, this, these cars if it had the period correct wheels and didn't have all the fiddling with the, um, with the turbos, I'd be all over this, but this car is terrifying. It has, it has the potential. If you change the wheels, it would look so much better, but you're still, still dealing with a car where some guy has screwed with it. And you, you just never want to see a turbo timer or boost gauges on, you know, aftermarket boost gauges on the a pillar that just screams like, Oh yeah, this thing's definitely going to blow up at any moment. Cause who knows what kind of <laughs> stupid tune the guy did. So true. I mean, it's just, just like, Ugh. dude, leave it, make it as stock as you could possibly be and put this on rad for sale. And I think you have a 15 to possibly, you know, higher thousand dollar car. But here, yeah. I think it's going to stall out. I don't think it breaks. I mean, well, let's hear what's your number. Well, and, and th I don't think this car is on the right platform at all. I yeah. agree with you. This thing on rad for sale would get way more love and attention than it will on Doug DeMiro's site. Uh, and I also agree with you that if you put it back to stock, that would also improve the value. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I mean, where do you think this car is going to go? I, that's a good guess. I think this car... It's Let's way see. too I high already. I mean, with the wheels and the and the middling with the stupid turbo stuff, it's it's too high. So this is... Yeah, so I put twelve thousand dollars last night. I'm gonna see and take a grand off of a JP and say eleven thousand will win this auction. All right, uh, I think this is gonna be another one of those uh, typical cars and bids types of things where we've seen all the bids we're gonna get. I'll say ninety five hundred dollars. Okay. And give you a spread there. Uh, if you know what, I, the next time we get one of the rad for sale guys on, if we get uh, if we get Bradley or or Warren or Lane, I want to bring this car up and go. All right, if someone submitted this car, would you just would you demand that they change the wheels? 
uh, before no, you carry they're, it. They're all going to say no. Those guys are going to say that they're, they're starting off. It's a honeymoon. They'll accept anything. Yeah. That's a, and I, I think that's going to be a great conversation because I want to hear what they have to say. Cause this is the kind of thing that I could, I think could make or break their platform. If they allow stupid stuff like this. People are going to be like, eh, well, I'll let anything that's, the, but if they, if they made a case out of, Hey, here's a car. And we, I mean, this thing, Oh man, it could be worth twice as much if it just wasn't, Somebody came out of pocket to develop their auction platform. And until that thing is paid off, they are going to say yes <laughs> to everything that qualifies. I can uh, I suppose assure you're right. you. I suppose Listen, you're right. And they might not articulate it in that way, but I yeah. promise you, even if one of them has the same integrity as you, as far as like being faithful to the era and yeah. he's burning with that inside, the words that come out of his lips are, ah, it's okay. I mean, they just, yeah. it's, he's get, they're going to say yes until they pay it off and they're in the black. You're right. Good call. Yeah. All right. What's, uh, let's move. Let, well, let's go to a car and rad for sale. There we go. Absolutely. Now, this what car a is segue. a rad for sale car right here. This is not screwing yeah. rent. And this is also a Canadian car, JP. In fact, this car is mm. still in Canada. Offered to us out of Port Moody, British Columbia. Uh, with just 28,000 miles, is this 1995 first-generation Dodge Viper. This is a V10 with a six-speed manual and less than 3,000 pounds. This thing is a freaking beast. And once again, JP, we run into an unusual green metallic yeah. paint job. I do not recall seeing this color on a Viper uh, ever. Uh, this is really interesting uh, because it's almost – almost british racing green in a metallic flavor but not quite uh, i still think it looks pretty good the darker colors on these first generation uh vipers uh definitely give them kind of a butch uh tough look whereas a lot of them that were in yellow and white and certainly the red that was so common uh, i think the cars look cheap and plasticky but this this car uh this is a looker at least in my opinion uh, anyway, 28,000 miles is pretty good amount on the odometer. It's nice to see that the car has been driven, but it's not like terribly high miles. By no stretch is this car a, a garage queen. It's not 2,800 miles. So you got to wonder where this is going to land, considering that it's still on uh, Rad for Sale, which is in their infancy, and it's still in Canada. So I'm happy to see that this car is already at 20,500 on three bids. It has just an hour to go. Do we think that this car has a chance of meeting its reserve? And where do we think the reserve might come in? You know? Yeah. I mean, I am not as, uh, I hate this color. It's so funny how close it is to the one on the Cayenne, but this is yeah. not British racing green. This is 1994 Honda Accord teal. Uh, this right. is like Jeep. the ugliest green color yeah. imaginable. And it's so funny how close it is to a color that looks great. It's like, yeah, you could have gotten it. Could you imagine if this car was the same jet metallic green as that Cayenne? This thing would be like, yeah. whoa. But instead, well, it just looks like a Geo Metro in the same color. Well, the very first special edition Miata was British racing green. Yeah. With tan seats and like a wood steering wheel and a wood shifter knob and a wood brake handle. Imagine if they did that treatment to the Viper. <laughs> that yeah. would be really cool. Right. I mean, it's but it's it's so funny how close a British racing green is to just like minivan green. Uh, you, That's you, true. As soon as you cross the line into, is that teal? You got a problem. You, you, yep. No no car can be cool <laughs> in teal. And I'll, even like a wide body C4 uh, 964 Porsche. in teal Turbo. would just be like, oh God, just wrap it. You know, I can't, it is gorgeous just as that would just, just, you know, get some vinyl. Um, this is oh just, my God. I, I hate this color. Uh, I, I, I'm just not a fan of these first gen Vipers at all. I love what they are. I love what they do. I love that they exist and I like what they kind of became ultimately. But this, this is the worst sensibilities of the nineties, uh, incarnate right here, wrapped around a bunch of power. Um, there's just, there, there's nothing good about the sensibilities of this car. Uh, that's just, oof, that's some ugly stuff. And I love cars that have uh, target tops. And this th this car on paper should be everything I like. Has no nanny controls, has tons of power, is stupid dangerous, have you, hard to drive, and no top. That, that has my have name you, written all over it. 
have you ever driven one? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I've driven okay. the heck out of a couple. I've driven yeah. a bunch of these, and I've driven. I I've said it before on the show. I really like the, and I I think it's the called third I think gen. it's the third gen. Yeah, the two thousand three yeah. to two thousand seven or whatever is actually my favorite. I think that's one of the best values in supercars, or at least it was. Uh, they, yeah. I haven't seen one for sale in ages. They used to be relatively cheap. Um, but you we'll put cover that, a few vipers. Yeah, we'll, we'll pick some. Yeah, let's find one of those if we see one. Uh, every yeah. time I'm digging through the uh, every time we're sifting through the most interesting cars of the day uh that's always something i'm looking for and i have yet to see in the last five months so uh all right where's this one gonna land uh jp i think i put twenty five thousand dollars okay i think that's a good bid i i don't think that a lot of people that like this car will agree with me about this color uh i think a lot of people will like this color i think this is a color that will bring some money i know that i am in the minority uh in being correct that this is the ugliest color ever uh so that's fine Uh, a lot of people like nickelback so this car is gonna go for 27 i mean this really is a nickelback song on wheels I think it's going to break yeah. 30 really between you and me, Deeb. Uh, but uh, I'll, be, okay. I'll be a little conservative and say 27. I mean, it's low miles and it's a first gen Viper. These are on the way up. It's in Canada. Yeah. I, I And that's why I'm only going 27. I mean, it's got to cross the board. Right. I think if this were in California, this is a $35,000 car. Easy. Maybe, maybe closer to 40. Uh, but I think right. it's because it's a, a, because it's not in country. It's going to be a kind of a pain in the butt. Canada is difficult right now so good luck oh canada yeah all right right. what else we got all right last car jp back to doug demiro's site because he's got an m5 with a v10 this thing Mm. is so cool i know i I know you know this i used to drive one of these i had one for a little while uh and i loved it i um i i I loved it so much i drove it into things twice Uh, i had two (laughs) car accidents in that car which is bananas and just collisions with other cars but you know you can't win them all uh this one's an 08 jp it's offered to us out of kansas city missouri Hmm. with just fifty four thousand original miles uh so this car is basically unused uh it's in alpine white which is not common on this generation of the car uh but this car is all about that motor that five liter v10 is a beast uh the smg gearbox the 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 sequential manual gearbox is a pile of garbage waiting for is like oh 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 uh-huh. No, pile of garbage. But I, I am going to tease ahead that we might see one with a manual later in the week. Okay. Uh, but this car is offered on Doug DeMiro's um, uh, platform with a clean Carfax, low miles, and no reserve. So this car will sell. So in about two hours, we're going to find out what this thing is actually worth. Uh, it's sitting at $21,000 on 11 bids, which is already a pretty respectable number for mm-hmm. these cars. These cars are pretty soft in the secondary market because nobody really likes that transmission. The cars that came later might not have been exciting, but they were definitely easier to drive. Uh, but this one, I love the front end of this. This is uh, a good-looking car, and that V10 revs to like 7,000, 8,000 RPM. So if you roll down the windows and, and drive it through the tunnel on the way to the airport in Las Vegas – you'll sound like a F1 car from the mid nineties. And I think it's cool that they even made this thing. Uh, and the fact that you can pick one up cheap is also pretty interesting. So uh, JP, what do you think? I, the interior is hideous. Let's just, get that out yeah, of the way right now yeah yeah why bother even talking about it luckily all that that big wood ugly wood trim you could you know wrap yeah, that or off. hydro dip it or something like that or just straight i think people make different versions of it or whatever yeah such a beautiful car great car to drive uh even with this absolutely piece of junk transmission these are a lot of fun the only time they're fun really is though when you're driving in anger it's like trying trying to drive one of these around is a pain in the butt because of that transmission just you know it's like worse than a manual trying to drive one of these in traffic uh it's like ka-clunk 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 someone i was reading very recently somewhere on a forum or i don't know where it was but somebody was telling me that these can be converted into a manual without replacing the entire transmission like it's a manual transmission Ooh. with some kind of electro gizmo box clamped to it that's moving everything through the gears uh that sounds crazy to me but maybe that's possible i don't know uh like i said yeah. we don't know anything on the bid nerds we are not experts we're just a bunch of morons uh but i tell you it doesn't take an idiot to tell you that this is just not a car that you want to own uh it's so close yet so far away. <laughs> Um, where's it going to land? Yeah, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a good description, JP. Uh, so our car has just two hours to go out of Kansas city, Missouri. 
Um, and once again, JP, I am going to bid $25,000 on the car. Uh, I, I don't think it's going anywhere further than where it's at. It's at what right now? 21? 21. Yeah. Yeah. I think it stalls out 22. Maybe, maybe another bid or two comes in. Okay. I think that's it. You know, that's a wrap. Typical cars and bids. You get to the end and it doesn't have those late stage rallies. It's just, that's it. That's as high as it's going to go. Uh, all right. Yeah. That is the, that's the show. That's a Monday. Yeah. We somehow muscled through a Monday. Yeah. Thanks for, uh, thanks for show sticking one with a us, and guys. show one B. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we are here Monday through Friday at nine o'clock doing a live show on the other webs on YouTube. Uh, you can see this show live, especially if you hit the notification button uh, right there on the screen and uh, Look at that. YouTube will let you know that this show is live every day. It's kind of hard to find us after the show goes live because YouTube takes a little while to populate. Our, our page with the uh, older with the episode from earlier in the day so to get the freshest nerds and you want fresh nerds trust me you don't want stale musty old nerds uh, <laughs> that is just not a good thing so get the freshest yeah. nerds you can by hitting the notification button as well as the subscribe and like buttons uh, hit us a comment and let us know what you think of our bids let's hear some of your guys' bids you know let's see if you guys are as bad at this as we are and uh, come back tomorrow and nerd out some more we also have Reese uh, Hayden from uh, Hyper Trash Mag coming on Wednesday yeah. some other guests in the oh, queue that's awesome uh, so should be a fun week on the Bid Nerds thanks for watching Michael Deeb anything else you want to say before we are out of here no tune in tomorrow Reese is great this will be fun you guys uh, will that'll like be me. that'll be Wednesday that'll be Wednesday oh Wednesday oh, yeah. well tune yeah. in tomorrow anyways and we'll talk about Reese yeah probably no! right, get those nerds